Virginia. Uh, it's football program over the senseless killings that took place uh, over this past weekend. Our prayers um, to the families and friends, certainly who have lost loved ones. It's um, it's tragic, sen- senseless, and uh, it pains me to understand why something like this would happen. And so our thoughts are, are with uh, everyone there in Charlottesville. Try to ask you about football now. No, um, I know. Josh Breyer receiving his first start. How did he grade out at right tackle? And just how do you feel like the offensive line overall is playing through ten games now? Uh, Josh graded out a champion. Played well. Um, you know, when when you play a full game, you get a a, a real good um, you know feel for where you're at and his preparation leading up to this to that game. When you're a backup coming off of the injury last year too, he was growing and building. The good thing for him is he was getting in games um, at times in that in our, our, our Bison package, but. Um, uh, he graded out a champion, played well. A lot of plays he's got to get better at. But um, I thought we took a step in the right direction um, on Saturday with the offensive line. Right behind him, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Uh, just come with some of the backstory behind the block punt. Yeah. So um, every week we have a couple block punts that we, we work on. Um, and then based on what we're seeing, we make adjustments in game. Uh, Lathan's been working hard. You know, we have about five guys that we work uh, at the punt blocks um, from different angles and, and different schemes. Uh, Lathan's one of those guys that's put a lot of work in. And, and what we do on Thursdays is we put on, um, you know, in baseball, when those guys put on those gloves with the um, the metal piece there to, to save them from, you know, jamming their wrist or breaking their hand when they slide into, um, you know, second base. Uh, we do the same thing. Josh Proctor in 2019 went to do the same thing and, and broke his hand. I said, that's it, we're not going to do that again. So we had to figure out a way to block punts without putting our hands and fingers at risk. So that's what he wears. He wears the gloves. And that's what our guys do. And so over and over again, he you know puts the gloves on and we talk about putting the gloves on and then you know working on the technique of blocking a punt. In game, we saw some things on the sideline and you know Parker made a great adjustment, said this is how we're going to do it. Not exactly the way we practiced it during the week, but Lathan was able to put that on the field. And then obviously, you know, that was kind of a, a turning point in the game, I think, that, that kind of uh, helped us pull away. Given some of the issues and the buff punch you've had over the last couple of weeks, has there been conversations to maybe try that more often? Uh, we try. You know, and, and there's certain times where based on what they're doing, you know, it's better to return it. And there's other times where you want to go after it. Now, when you go after it, there's, there's a risk that goes with that. You know, you, you bump into the punter. It's, it's a first down and 15 yards, and that can be a momentum swing as well. So uh, there's give and take there. Um, we have gone after some, and they just, you know, the blocking scheme just didn't quite work out that way. There's a lot more challenges um, with the new style of the rugby punters with the shield as opposed to maybe like 10 years ago, you saw more of the pro style where those guys would kick slide, and it was more of a, uh, in the pocket punt, you know, guys nowadays with the Australian rules punters, they are they can really you know be creative about where they go, and it becomes a different and probably more difficult challenge to block punts. Uh, right behind him, Dan Holt, Eleven Warriors. Ryan, you said after the game Saturday that Xavier hadn't been practicing much at running back. Is that something that he will do more going forward <coughs> after playing the way he did Saturday? Yeah, he's he's done uh, both in his career. He. Um, had been practicing uh, more at receiver recently, but he's done a lot at running back as well. Um, you know, he's he spent really first couple of years at running back, and so um, he, you can see his running skills. I mean, he jumped right in, and it wasn't like um, you know we had to spend a ton of time with him on the tracks. He's got plenty of experience doing that, and um, you know we always kind of felt like he was more of a running back than he was a receiver, and then. Um, you know, he's blossomed as a receiver as well. So, um, you know, him being able to provide depth right there has been huge. And um, he's done really good things when the ball's been in his hands. What do you think it is about him that enables him to go back and forth between positions so successfully? I think it's because he learned, um, you know, coming through special teams, all the different ways to play football. Um, you know, you just learn so much playing all four phases. And he's done that. And he's embraced it. You know, you're playing out in space on kickoff return. You're... Uh, learning how to avoid blocks. You're learning how to block people. You're learning um, how to catch the ball. You know, when he's the kickoff return guy, he's done some punt return work and practice. Uh, there's just so many different things and skills that you learn playing special teams, and that's translated to him being productive on the field. Uh, fourth row middle, uh, Pat Murphy, 24 7 sports. Brian, you said competitive excellence probably as much as anything this year, and yep. you guys have obviously done that well. You've got a, a game this weekend, but. There's a big one coming in, in two weeks. How do you guys keep 
attention on Maryland, make sure no one's looking ahead to, to get to where you want to go before that game? I think it's something that, that comes up every week. Um, it comes up every year, this time of year. So what we try to do is, is like you said, the, the uh, competitive excellence focus is something that we talked about early on so that when we got to a moment like this, um, you don't just walk in on a Tuesday meeting and say, guys, OK, we've got to really focus on this week. Well, we've been saying this all along. And you know, March Madness starts the first week of the season around here. And so you just have to embrace that and understand what, what it means to bring it every single week. Um, now we're working, you know, the game at the end of the year, every day out of the year. So that's not something that is out of the ordinary to know that that's always in the back of our minds. But that's like that every week. So our our focus right now is on Maryland going down there at three thirty, playing really good football, and then going from there. Uh, former right, Cameron Steve Robinson, the Athletic. Ryan, kind of to expand on that, you mentioned you mentioned even last week that you guys prepare for the game at the end of the year all year long. Right. I know you're not sitting here watching Michigan film, but like, how do you? What goes into preparing for big games on a weekly basis for you guys? Well, I, I just think it's it's a mindset. It's something that um, you know we've we've done in the off season. We do all all along, um, you know. But right now, again, the, the focus has to be uh, on how we play on Saturday, and that's uh, building towards the end of the year and playing our best football in November, because we know we have to play our best, you know. We have an opportunity to go 11 and 0 this weekend and still not have reached one of our goals yet. You know, it's just sobering, but it's the facts. So well, we know that, and um, it's it's part of that building process, week in and week out, to be playing our best football in November, and that's what we focus on. And so um, we got a really good opponent here in Maryland. They've played some teams really well this year. And you look at um, the teams that they played and the scores and what they've done. Uh, you know, Mike's done a good job of recruiting some really good athletes there. I think Tao Lee is a very talented quarterback. They have some weapons on the outside. Um, and, and they've played good on defense. I mean, I think they're stout over there, and they've, they've played well this season. So, um, you know, we've been in battles with these guys before. You know, we've been in the same situation in uh, 2018. And, you know, we, that game went into overtime. So, um, you know, Mike does a really good job, and we're going to have to play really well. I think it's it's the balance that uh, he found growing up. Um, his mom, Monica, certainly had a big part in all of that, and in, in making sure that um, you know he understood that uh, football is something that he does. It's not who he is, and that balance is is become more important now. I feel like than ever before, um, with the exposure our players get and everything that comes with it. Um, you know that balance is very very important because at some at some point football does end, and when it does. You have to find that balance in your life. And I think Paris found that at a young age. Right next door, Spencer Holbrook, out of his role, on three. Ryan, Ty Hamilton played more uh, run defense snaps against Northwestern and then played more pass defense snaps against uh, in, the, in the last game to the end. What, what do you guys like about him on the inside? And have you seen him take a step forward? I think he had the most, second most snaps of any defense. Yeah, no, I, I think he's playing his best football by far. I think you guys have seen it, graded out a champion. Um, and, and I think you're seeing versatility there. I think you're seeing, like you said, you know, strong against the run, powerful against the run, but also transitioning in, into the pass rush and, and pushing the pocket. Um, you know, Ty's gotten better every day. He works every day. He's there every day. And, you know, we, we think he's playing at a starter, starter level. Uh, Dylan Davis, Dylan versus the Pet. Third row right. Was Dallin Tatum somebody in the summer that you looked at and said, that guy could play for us right now? Or that just kind of happened naturally as the season progressed and as you had to put him in there? I guess, you know, how is his development? I mean, the talent was there. It's a matter of how quickly can they assimilate, how quickly can they get into the the, um, the program and the culture, and then can they uh, sustain over an extended period of time with all of the the things that we ask of them. You know, academically, um, you know, in the weight room, you know, the preparation, the, the, the just the daily grind of being a college football player as a freshman. That's really what you don't, you're not sure about a young player. And then sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit longer for them to get on the field. Uh, for Dallin. Um, you know, he's been able to, when he's getting on the field, first of all, he's taking care of the ball. It's the number one job as a running back. And then from there, you know, he's been able to go play and not um, let the moment be too big for him. I think when you watch him run, he runs with good vision. He runs with, um, you know, he's got good quickness, good feet in the hole, um, accelerates through the hole. And, um, you know, I think you know, that when I watch him, I think 
the best thing he's doing is just trusting his instincts and going out and play and not letting the moment get too big for him. So if he can keep building on that and growing on that, um, he's got a bright future ahead of him. you got pretty good depth at a wide receiver. I don't think there's a lot of people that would have said if you lose Jackson yeah. uh, that, you, that you wouldn't miss a beat. Yeah. How important is that, the reputation of that room in recruiting and, and what you've established here to be able to say with whatever wide receiver you or whatever it may be? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you had said to me that that was going to happen this year, um, I, I wouldn't have believed you, you know. But but here we are, and and that's football. You have to overcome these types of things, and that's where depth becomes critically important. And um, understanding that, you know, when you come here, you come here to play. Um, when you play, that's kind of up to you. And how fast can you get on the field, and how quickly can you get a starter level? Uh, but you're going to have a great opportunity, and our guys have taken that opportunity to run with it. Um, but I think you can see the development. You can see the blueprint. You can see, um, you know, how we do things schematically, uh, fundamentally, the way Brian teaches, um, and so it's an exciting time to be a wide receiver at Ohio State. Follow up. Um, that said, what would Jackson give you right now? I mean, there are people who say well, you haven't missed anything; you don't really need him. But what would he add to what the offense is? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say now that we've played ten games um, and not really had him available. But listen, Jackson. Um, you know, is one of the best receivers in the country, one of the best, you know, slot receivers I've ever been around. So, um, you know, he's been missed. What's the status, if you can just follow up on that? Yeah, no update at this point. Yeah. When are all uh, reps? Don't they read Cleveland Um uh, Ryan, you, you mentioned after the game that maybe you've been a little stubborn, is the word you used, in terms of trying to run the ball in short yardage. There's been sort of this toughness conversation this whole year that you guys have embraced and you want to be that tough football team. Is is short yardage like the way that best manifests itself? Or how – what are the ways that any football team, like actually on the field in moments, shows toughness in your mind? Yeah, um, I, I think the first thing is just physicality and how hard you play. Uh, we say relentless effort is, you know, four to six A to B plus two, four to six seconds the length of a play, point A to point – point B and then for, for two seconds past the cone or, or past the whistle, two steps past the cone. I, I think that's a big thing. You know, can you play with unbelievable effort week in and week out as hard as you possibly can? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, is really just the physicality of actually looking someone in the eye and knocking them back. Um, there was a lot of great instances of great toughness. Um, you know, I look at Xavier Johnson's, Johnson's run. I mean, there were guys running 70 yards down the field getting, you know, blocks where they're knocking people to the ground and I mean, there was like three of them downfield. Unbelievable effort. Um, there was some really good clips in here on the we, we show in the champions meeting. I think I think we had about 14 clips of just relentless effort, toughness, discipline, guys playing really hard. Some unbelievable clips on special teams of just guys laying out, uh, being knocking people over. Um, so I think all those things lead to that. Now you got to bring it every week, but those are the things. In terms of the short yardage. Um, yeah, I mean that can be a part of it. You got to get movement. You know, you got to you got to run a guy over. You got to be physical, and um, and you know we we split the big one for um, on third and one for the touchdown. That was great, but then there was some other ones that you know we got to do a better job of. Uh, right next door, Bill Landis. <coughs> right. Um, I, I guess maybe following up on that idea, Ryan. Like, I, I think I might express this wrong, but I feel like sometimes you're you're in games where the margins can get so wide that maybe you have a luxury to kind of work through stuff during a game that other teams maybe don't have sometimes. Does that ever creep up in those situations where you're trying to cultivate something, you're trying to, to get good work in game situations in short yardage where maybe if the situations were different, you wouldn't, as you said on Saturday, try to bang your head up against the wall? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we, we have to get certain things done. And, um, yeah, when you, when you find yourself in certain games, and you know you you got to do what's best for the the future of where you're going, not always in that moment right there. Um, there's the time and place for everything. Um, so, you know, we we got to get that done. You know, and and we're gonna keep working at it. And, and there's been good progress made, but um, those situations aren't going away. And um, you know, we're gonna keep working at it. What is your I guess uh, overall philosophy on on throwing the ball in those situations? I think some people look at that and say that's maybe. A pretty aggressive mindset to throw it on third and one, where you can just kind of fall forward for a yard. But how do you balance the physicality you want with throwing the ball with the quarterback and receiver you have? 
You know, when you um, when you look at those situations, you know, certainly running the ball, you have, you have to at some point say, you know, we, we can run one yard, you know, and, and there's going to be a lot of guys in a box, and that's a me- mentality and a physicality. And But there's been other times, and you guys have seen it, and fourth and one in the Rose Bowl, and we're shooting it down the field. So, um, you know, we're going to do what's best to win the game. But there is part of that mindset that, you know, we got to make a yard when it's, you know, fourth and one. You guys have 11 days until the big one here at the shoe. What do you need to see at Maryland to know that this team is ready for the Um I mean, I don't think there's anything that we're going to say, you know, now we're ready to go play this game. We just got to keep doing what we're doing, keep preparing the way that we've prepared, play well, uh, find a way to win the game, and then and then move on to that one. Rick dealt with a lot of injuries this year. It seems like more than most seasons. How frustrating can that be at times for a team to kind of just have to change pieces how you know how ready does this team just get back to full strength yeah i mean it it, it can be very frustrating uh, for sure but uh, at the same time it's part of the game and you see it happening across the country week in and week out um we try to do everything we can to make sure they have everything they need to get back on the field or prevent themselves from getting injured um you know the prevention is really through sports science through monitoring and recovery and then then we have our sports medicine department that helps them once they have an injury to get back on the field and uh, those guys do an unbelievable job, and they work at it. And you know, there was a lot of guys that played in that game that you know were were, were hurting. I mean, you know, you, you don't hear that because we don't really you know put it out there. But there was a handful of guys this time of year that were pushing through a lot of bumps and bruises and things like that because it's you know November in the Big Ten. That's how it goes. So um, you know, we're we're working on healing up to get healthy, but um, we have the right mindset. And I think the way that you saw us play on Saturday, you can see that. Our guys are strong and they're and they're persevering through it. Ryan, you go back to 2018, and uh, Jerry and Mike remind us in the notes Haskins ran for three touchdowns that day. Were you calling those runs, or was that Urban who's in love with that quarterback run? I think at that point of that season, that was a unique time. I think you remember it was a couple points in the season where we were really struggling, just getting any kind of run game going, and you know. Uh, there was a point where, you know, Dwayne scrambled and, and threw it down and, and actually got booed in Ohio Stadium for not, you know, running for a first down. And there was there was a, some some hard feelings there for a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, Dwayne got challenged to, you know, get involved with the run game. And um, he did in that game, played really tough. And that was his um, his hometown, you know, and all his friends and family were there. And, um, you know, during his service, um, you know, this past year, you know, that, that game was brought up as like a, a, a huge game for him and there's maturity as a player. And, uh, boy, he played well in that game because that was, what was it, 52-51 back and forth. And uh, what a strange game. But, you know, the, the message will be to our team this week. I mean, that was a wounded team that um, uh, their head coach, I think, had been been fired. And, and, and they, they still played us really, really well. And um, Maryland's always dangerous, especially there. Coach, you've said all year it doesn't matter who you're playing. It's about what you guys do. With that said, this is the time of the year you want to be playing your best ball. Obviously, the big one's looming. How close are you to playing what you would consider your best ball, and, and what do you want to see better this week? You know, I, I feel like if you say you're playing your best ball, that means you played your best ball last week and you can't get any better than it the next week, you know. So I think it's this constant build and growth towards maximizing yourself in all three phases. Uh, do I think we've played uh, our best football yet? No, I don't. Uh, I think that we can play better in all three phases, and we're going to have to to go reach our goals. So um, this is a constant chase towards, you know, being the best version of ourselves. And every week, that's that's the goal is just to get better. And how fast can we get better in certain areas? Um, I think I've shared with you the challenge sometimes is the issues are there. They may not get exposed every week, but you got to identify what those issues are, and that's the art of you know coaching. With that said, we know what's down the road. Do you, do you feel an intensity shift, especially this week? Um, you know, we'll see as the week goes on, but um, our guys know where our goals are. Uh, we talked about it at the mid-year. You know, we were 6-0 and going in, uh, to the bye, and we said you know none of our goals have been met. I reminded the guys um, on Sunday, none of our goals have been met. They know what's um, what's on the table. But, you know, in order to go reach our goals, we've got to win this game too. You know, we just, it's a part of the game. You've got to win them all. And um, so we'll 
keep that one in the back of our mind like we do every single day out of the year. But we're going to focus on beating Maryland on Saturday. Far left, Justin Holbrook, WTMH. When it comes to a true freshman, especially like Dallin or Travion last year, what's the balance between maturity and character and ability? And, and why those two things work simultaneously and why they can work right away when they get here? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think that the, the, the talent um, has to be there because if, if you don't have the talent, then it's hard to, to keep up. You know, it's hard to, to perform on the field. But um, if, if you don't have the maturity, like you said, the um, the work ethic, um, the ability to process high levels of information, um, you know, handle uh, a brand new workload that you didn't have in high school, those add up real fast on you, especially this time of year. So, um, and then a lot of times guys hit, hit a lull and they come back out of it. You know, they struggle. Like that really happened to Chris Olave his freshman year. But he was struggling. He wanted to go back to California in the worst way. And a couple of guys put their arms around him. He came out of it. And then remember the game he had at the end of the year. So um, I don't know if Down got that uh, you know low at some point. I, you'd have to ask him. But every, every freshman goes through it. And then if you can come out the back end, then usually you're stronger for it. And um, you know, good to see him play the way he did on Saturday. I'm not sure that's going to give me more confidence. Uh, second row left, Steve Bellwagen, 24/7 Sports. Yeah, Coach. I don't suppose you're going to tell us if Travion Anderson and Mayan Williams are ready to practice or whatever. But just from a, a general standpoint, uh, given the uncertainty, you're going to play with a running back. Just how do you prepare for this game with the idea they may practice half the time, they may not play, practice or play at all? Just just from a general standpoint, how do you guys go into the week at that position? Um, you know, In a perfect world, everyone's healthy and everyone's practicing and getting all the physical reps that you would need in, in a game week. Um, we have physical reps and mental reps. And so what you have to do is you have to really focus hard on if you're not getting all the reps that you need in practice, being in the back and getting the mental rep, putting yourself in there, actually physically walking through that rep and seeing the picture, then going through watching the film and doing a lot of extra work uh, on your own. That's why I give Xavier Johnson a lot of credit last week because he didn't have all the physical reps, but he was able to put it on the field at a pretty high level when he was in there playing that position. So um, that'll be the challenge if those guys aren't able to physically practice as much. Deep left, Nathan Bears, Cleveland.com. Ryan, in a couple of years, we're going to be in a, a Big Ten with no divisions. And if that existed this year, you guys would already be guaranteed of playing Michigan after the Michigan game, playing them again for the Big Ten championship. Hmm. Just curious how you think that changes the, the vibe around that game. Do you, do you, are you okay with this new setup in the Big Ten? Do you know it's going to come with? something that maybe compromises what you get out of that game? You know, I, I mean, I, I remember initially thinking that very thing, but until you just said that, um, hadn't given it much thought recently. But um, it certainly does make you think for a second. Uh, I, I can't tell you I'm in a place to be focusing on anything other than trying to beat Maryland and going after those guys. But um, yeah, that'll be very unique for sure. Um, you know, I guess more like, you know, an NFL, you know, situation where you may have to play a team multiple times and that would um, – you know, kind of affect maybe your game planning, but um, we'll worry about that when we get down the road. Fourth row middle, Tony Bergman, Buckeye Huddle. Uh, Brian, the NFLPA, I don't know if you saw this, came out and asked to have an immediate ban and removal of all slip film turfs in the NFL, which is the same kind of turf here at Ohio State. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that, if you had heard about that. Split turf, I don't even know what that well, is. The, the, the type of turf that Ohio State uses due to a higher number of injuries, I guess the NFLPA wants that stuff removed, and I just wondered if you had heard about that. Or no, it's the first I've heard of any of that, yeah. I can say, Tony, if, I, if you don't mind me yeah. interrupting there, that, that we've had some discussions, some of the administrators have here. I know the NFL is not mandating that these stadiums remove their, uh, their fields. Um, we test our fields twice a year annually. We'll continue to do that. Uh, but there has been some discussions about the, the, uh, the, the topic that you're discussing. Yeah. All right. Uh, front row right. <laughs> uh, Austin Ward, Austin uh, Rivals, 97.1. Get short yardage. Um, <laughs> there's your excuse. Uh, right on Saturday alone, you had the magic of Cam Babb, Cam Brown. Came back he, for another year and more injuries, and made a couple big plays. You had a former walk-on run for a 70-yard touchdown. From the outside, those look like things that talk validate the strength of your culture. They're also different kind of stories that maybe we were focusing on a year ago. How different does it feel this year to be in it compared to a year ago, just by direct comparison? 
Yeah, you don't really prepare for 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 a moment like Cam's or for kind of a day like that when you see things like that happen. It's just one of those things where it happened with the Lath Lathan Ransom pump, punt block. You just sw keep swinging at the rock, and eventually it cracks. And you saw some of that happen on on, uh, on Saturday. Um, you know, these are guys, you know, you take Mitch Rossi, for example. You take Xavier Johnson, Cam Babb, you know, guys who have overcome a lot of things. And you can see when Cam Brown is healthy, what he can do. And I mean, if we're going to get to where we need to go, he's going to have to be a major contributor. Talk to him about that last week. Talk to our guys about that. Um, and that's part of this process. You think about where, where Cade was at, where, um, you know, Tommy was at. I mean, double hip labrum surgery as a freshman. And there's so many things that come with it. And you overcome them and you get stronger. And that, that's life. And, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons, you know, one of the major reasons that I got into coaching was to watch and help people overcome adversity because that's, that's what life is. Adversity is coming around the corner every single day. And how you handle it as a person kind of defines who you are. And to see some of these guys learn that process and not just say, well, I want to go transfer. Xavier Johnson could have probably gone a lot of places and played a lot of football. But here he is as a Buckeye making an impact on a team that wants to go you know, chase some some unbelievable goals. Cam Bad, what he's been through. Um, so, um, you know, and and for Cam Brown too. I mean, what an opportunity he has now to to write a story here down the stretch for himself. Um, and you don't always recognize the opportunity that you have. And so we try like hard to help our guys realize the opportunities right here. Because once it's gone, it's gone. You don't have this opportunity ever again. You look back the rest of your life. You have the rest of your life to go do other things. All of our energy right now needs to be focused on this team and where we're going. But, um, but I think there's been a lot of work done in the off season with Mick and the staff and our leaders to build that resilience and perseverance that you're talking about. You're you're at the top, but you're just one person. Did you think that you needed to do anything differently to get that? You're talking. You and Mick had conversations. I know about leadership groups and all that. I mean, how how much did you think? If you keep doing exactly what you're doing, then everyone will get on board. Or how much do I need to change from one year to the next? I mean, I think it's a little bit of everything. You look at, uh, you evaluate everything, and you try to figure out, you know, how to improve it. Um, you know, some things you you need to change. Other things you don't need to change. Some some guys just need more experience. Other things you do need to change. So we did. We we altered some things in the off season, like you said, with the leadership groups that I thought was huge. Um, but, but also, um, you know, sticking with what you believe in too, and having conviction in, in what the culture is all about and, and having conviction in the people that you bring into the program, because we have recruited great people into this program, staff, coaches, and people and players. And when you have great people in the program, I mean, it's been said here a long time, you win with people, then you believe in them, then you trust it, then you just keep working forward and, and you put your faith in people. So. Um, that's been the focus. Now we'll see if we can reach our goals. Ryan Carl, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, we, the moment that, that Cam Babb had was, was, was special, but what do you see moving forward, I guess, the role he can have for, for you guys now that he's, he's back just as far as being that rotation and, and being a contributor week in and week out? Um, we'll, we'll see what he'll be able to do physically uh, on a regular basis, and, and if he can take on more, then absolutely we'll give it to him. Um, we'll just have to see how much his body will be willing to actually take on. I actually don't. No, I actually don't. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that the, the setback in the preseason did set him back some. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how much he'll be able to take take on moving forward. Um, I hope it'll be a lot, but I just don't know. If he is able to kind of withstand the workload, what, what are his best traits as a receiver from the times you've been able to see uh, I know you guys were high in, yeah. in spring. He, very conscientious. I mean, very smart, understands the game, strong and powerful, explosive, good hands, runs really ex I mean, excellent routes, uh, very accountable, uh, good quickness in and out of the break, um, really good body language. I know CJ really liked throwing him. Four to the left, Jacob Benz, the Lantern. Yeah, hey, Ryan, I was just going back to some of the Big Ten and things like that from a recruiting standpoint after the conference announced at the UCLA, USC going to join the conference later on this decade and whatnot. How have you seen maybe the recruiting ramp up um, in the months since the announcement, um, or do you see it maybe becoming more of a long-term thing where Big Ten schools become more I, I think it's probably more of a long term. You'll see it over time. Um, I don't think it was immediate, although we are recruiting guys from the West Coast. We have been. Um, and there's been a lot of excitement about Ohio State um, and the fact that now there's two teams from L.A. coming to the Big Ten. 
so that's been good, and I think it'll be it'll be positive because now we're a nationwide uh, conference. Uh, front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. I hate to ask you about your least favorite topic, but you said after the game that you're optimistic that Dewand and, and Denzel will be able to play, and, and you expressed optimism about the running backs. Where does that stand right now? Yeah, same. I feel I feel the same way. Um, you know, we'll see as we get through the week. Uh, I think some guys will be on a pitch pitch count. Some guys will have to see how practice goes today. But um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we heard today and this morning was was promising. Okay. I, about the 2018 game, uh, one of the most pivotal plays in that game was you throwing, forwarding a pass to Rashad Berry, mm. converted defensive end <laughs> on fourth and one. You don't convert it, you lose. <laughs> how much have you thought about that play? And if it hadn't worked, you know, who knows? <laughs> um, that was a moment where you, you called the best play you thought gave us a chance to win the game. And at that moment, that was it. Um, and then I think after the game, I remember uh, being with, with Coach Meyer and, and he said, you realize you called the pass on fourth and one to Rashad Berry. And if he doesn't catch that, then, then you know, our, our, our season's a lot different. And, you know, you just one of those things, you just call it, you know, you, the decision's been made. You make the decision usually in a moment like that, um, you know, in a meeting room on a Wednesday. And you just call it, and you know you trust in your execution. But I had forgotten about that play. He just mentioned it. <laughs> and final question: Front row right, Tim May, Letterman Row on three. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Brad, right now in the season, all these questions, whatever, especially about personnel. Do you feel like you're driving a car where like pieces are flying off <laughs> and, a, and a tire's going flat, and yet you're you're picking up speed? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I would think the pressure. I mean. What is it like to be in that moment where you're you're trying to get a handle on going in, going to Maryland? You don't know really who's going to be available. Uh, how does that just impact like planning and everything else? You, you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, I guess it's part of being a college football coach right now. There's just there's a lot of changes that go on, and you try to do the best you can to prepare for uh, being in November in the Big Ten. This is just what we're dealing with. Uh, there's a lot of variables that come into play. Um, and the only way to do that is to build a tremendous amount of depth. And that's where, you know, I, I think back on the preseason when we're going through each position and, you know, guys are asking questions about each position group and it's like, well, who's going to get on the field? They're all going to get on the field. It's just the way it usually works. You know, and it's rare that a position would just play one guy the whole, the whole year just because it's such a long season, nine conference games plus Notre Dame. So um, it's just something you plan for and try to have contingency plans in place. And contingency-wise, could you see going into Saturday with Dallin Hayden being – in essence, a starter based on right now, and would uh, Xavier be the backup? You, you know what I'm saying? Or would, do, do you think Chip can come back? I mean, w w can, can you live with that, I guess? Yeah, I mean, well, we have to. We don't have a choice. That being said, um, you know, we, we feel like we have a really good chance to get, you know, all those guys back for next year, next week. Now, maybe one of them won't, but um, I'd be shocked if all three, you know, Chip, Mayan, and Trey would not be available. Um, I think we'll, we'll get – you know, hopefully at least two of them back and, and go from there. But I just don't know right now. Yeah. It's Thursday, that magic day, though, when you find Yeah, kind of. You get about 48 hours out, you got a pretty good feel. And last question, what are you all doing right now offensively that you really like? I mean, what, what, I mean, obviously throwing the ball, you know, no, you're all almost incomparable in that aspect. But what is it about this offense that, you, that just gets you going? Over 600 yards on Saturday and all those problems I just mentioned, you know, you dealt with. Yeah, I, I think it's probably the balance that we have that, um, you know, we worked hard on is that, you know, we have multiple personnel groupings. We have multiple ways to attack you in those those groupings, um, vertically, horizontally. You heard me talk about those types of things. And um, when you can do that and, and you feel like you have weapons on the outside and they're in one-on-one -on -one situations, you've got a great chance to be explosive the minute – you know, they have to go double them or help them, then that opens up the run game. And so when you find that balance, I think that's where we're at our strength. And I, I feel like we've worked hard on having that balance. Was it the missed Bronson play on that fourth and one that, that left you with that sour taste in your mouth? What, yeah, I think both of those plays. Side, yeah. yeah, both of those plays. You know, we, 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 didn't, we didn't get the cutoff on the backside. And if we do, we actually hit it out the front door. It was a walk-in for a touchdown, we, but we didn't. So and that's, that's what it comes down to, competitive excellence. Coach, thank you very All right, much. Thanks, guys. Thank